This is Terry Freeman. Jim Strickland. Dorsey Hobson. I'm DeAndre Brown. Felisa Househalter. Funky Politics. Funky Politics Show. Funky Politics. Funky Politics. Funky Politics. Y'all better keep listening. Funky Politics. Part of the Katsukia Network. Get funky with it. Get funky with it. Get funky with it. Get funky with it. You are listening to Funky Politics, powered by the Kazuki Network. You got your guy here, Doc Ward. Doc, what's up? Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, sometimes I thought I'd introduce you like that. Uh, you no problem. Get your boy here, at DC. Okay. I, and I know you're excited. To I'm, I'm excited because we've got a wonderful guest in the studio this afternoon, uh, Wendy Thomas, independent journalist, but she has been known to be a great. To be funky. Well, I wasn't going to say She's she was funky. funky, man. Wendy Thomas is funky. Is she funky? Very. Well, hey. Wendy, <laughs> welcome to our program, Wendy Thomas. It is a pleasure and delight to be in in your presence. Oh wow, it's a pleasure. That sound to, good? Yes, it's a you pleasure know, like to have that. this funky phenom here. Can we have her back again? I like what somebody said. It's a pleasure to be in your. I presence. don't make I don't make the production calls. You know, okay, whatever. Well, let, let's get let's get right into it. <laughs> Wendy, everybody knows that you are a uh, former. Um, not kid reporter, but she was a a former editorial uh, columnist. columnist for uh, the Commercial Appeal columnist uh, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Picture in the paper and everything. Yep, did the, yeah had the nice little photograph right, there, and right. uh, oftentimes you wrangle some feathers. Not only on the right, but you wrangle them on the left as well. But now that you're doing this this independent journalism kind of lifestyle deal, doesn't it feel great? <laughs> feel good to be independent. Does yeah. it feel good? Yeah. Be, does nothing it? like independent it's, journalism. It's freedom. Right. Freedom Free- always feels good. And well, freedom to be funny. <laughs> oh my God! It's freedom is always and to be correct. And to be correct. Yeah. Yeah. You got to always get it right. There you go. Well, you you working on a project right now? Tell us a little bit about the project you're working on now, and where you're going to be here maybe this time next year in terms of with this particular project. Right. Okay. So right now I am working on a year long reporting project called MLK Fifty justice through journalism so wow. it's time to the 50th anniversary of dr king's assassination wow and um it's going to be a look at economic justice so like we're real big on king dr king and the racial justice part and we just completely overlook the economic justice no doubt end of his uh, dream and mission so i want to try to re-engage the community with that which was actually the last Bastion, the last step, the last, right, the last right. campaign that, right before he was assassinated. Right. That's where he was going, and probably the reason why he was assassinated. I, I wasn't going to go there, but since Oh, we, we go there. This is wow. Well, now, we, we don't want you to give out any of those these neat neat details. We'll take a step. Come on. I'll take you with me. You come on. Okay. Just, just come on <laughs> down. All right. Oh, my gosh. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, Memphis has is the um, – poorest um second poorest large metro in the nation right and wow. so in the wow. in the who's the poorest um i think it's i want to say tucson it's somewhere out west okay wow um, well stockton california or something and and to me um to have that dubious distinction in the city where king died on a mission for um workers um economic public justice. workers economic justice right. unconscionable unconscionable yes, and so I want to think about what would we need to do differently, right, if we wanted to, to shed that distinction. And I think it, um, we need to talk about uh, black businesses, um, black empowerment, um, who holds the power and influence in Memphis. Are they acting in the best interest um, of the majority of the citizens? I think it's looking at uh, pilots and um, minority contracting with municipalities here. Uh, you know, it's going to be online it's going to be stories it's going to be photos it's going to be videos Mm -hmm. um definitely want to hear from the community about what questions they want answered about why memphis is the way it is and how we would need to go about making it different you are listening to funky politics and in our studio this evening we've got wendy thomas independent journalist and she is um undertaking a major project of a phenomenal woman yeah well she's a phenomenal woman. phenomenal woman Oh, that's a, actually the, bi- now, the now best. Now that's compliment. what you. Are, that's gonna yeah. be your news. Are you fuck number? You fuck number one woman. woman. Get it right. Man. Well, I, you know I can never fuck do that. No, nom- you can't do this with low energy now. Oh gosh. Fuck <laughs> nominal <laughs> woman. But I want to ask you this: since you're talking about Martin Luther King, and and we're looking at a lot of things that are going on in Memphis, Tennessee, as the second poorest city in the nation, and where we are in the economic struggle. If Martin Luther King were alive today, looking at things that were going on that were impeding the progress of those, particularly African Americans who probably represent 
uh, most of what is the right. downside of the economy. How much of this do you think he would be uh, fighting for others to include African Americans, which seems to be the diversity argument, versus talking to the community itself, who seemingly has not really done a lot from within and saying, hey, you know, I'm all for diversity, but right. the, but but the culture itself must strengthen itself first. Right, right. Well, before you, we just accept what someone is allowing you to be in and, and percentage goals and all of those things, that's not going to get you rich. You know, empowering yourself is going to be rich. What, where would he be on that? Do you yeah. Think, so if you read the research? text of his last speech, mm-hmm. um, he talked uh, specifically about boycotting white-owned businesses that weren't employing um, black workers mm-hmm. uh, and he also talked about um, taking your money out of whatever bank it was in and putting right. it in tri-state right so right. that was a big part of his message and something I think we probably straight away tri-state from. bank actually or was he saying black banks he actually I'm asking because I know no, he was he, a member he, 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 he named tri-state he named tri-state wow yep. funk nominal Funk nominal. Funk nominal. I've learned a new word. Yeah. Right. And so if you've been made a about, new word, <laughs> you can think about where Tri State is today. Wow. Right. Right. Yeah. right. You know. Right. Um, and they just had a bankathon maybe about a couple of months ago that we, we amongst other people promoted, and they were able to raise what about? Uh, I think it was a million half. Million half it? dollars. Yeah. But but why do they have to do that? You know what I mean? Right. You know, right. And if you look at the number of African Americans here, even though a million is nice, it sounds a nice number, but I think we broke it down that if. Every African American that was say over eighteen working gave like ten dollars, a hundred dollars. Right. That could have been like thirty million. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think he would definitely support uh, and encourage us to support our own businesses, mm-hmm. not to um, the exclusion of wanting to be part of the larger community. Sure. But that would definitely be something he would stress. And so, how can we um, reengage with that and make that a a priority um, in this majority? black community right you're listening to funky politics powered by the kazuki network we're visiting with uh wendy thomas independent journalist and journalist journalistic guru you know and and what i remember about dr king and a lot of things that he did uh and of course i was young but what i've read over the years is is this war on poverty and we, we we talk today in our vast number of communities about poverty uh, how the district the school districts are this or, or 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 crime is this but we always tag it to poverty i don't necessarily believe that poverty is the reason why ray ray and boo boo just shot at each other that's not poverty to me you know so well, so so if he would no well it could be, no it could no it could be hatred hold on now hold on let me finish it could be self hatred and 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 Driven I'm gonna tell you, what? well, it's because not because of what? Well, because I was in a club and we were clubbing together, and I shot him because I don't like him, and because that's got something to do with poverty. No, Dr. King wasn't fighting for that kind of thing. I think the the true meaning of of what he was fighting for in terms of economic justice and poverty was how do we move our people up from that 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 thinking? And why was it important to move people out of poverty? Because when you move out of poverty, your range of opportunity and your range of of alternatives changes. Because now, if not for the simple fact that you now have something more to lose, uh, but also because you're exposed to more alternatives and you settle things differently. So absolutely, it's about pop. Remember but, we said really? this time, But really, you believe that? When you're on these shows, but you don't listen to them. Because we uh, established a long time ago. No, that you poverty, established we, a long time ago. Said, mm, I didn't believe okay, that crap. we're going to roll it back like you did. I didn't did, believe like that you crap. Did I'm sorry. I didn't believe right. We're going to roll out. it back. We said uh, poverty we, we said poverty was more than just financial. No, no, it is social. It was religious. It was physical. But it when I have a disagreement, everything. is it necessarily poverty, though? If is it? If your your thought processes could be impoverished, when your alternative to someone uh, a dispute is to take arms and shoot someone and end their life, mm-hmm. and not just end their life, but then end yours as well, because yeah. you will be caught up in the system. Sure. You will be prosecuted. Yeah. You will be incarcerated. Yeah. If your range of alternatives is to go straight to that button, the nuclear option, right. then yeah, you are impoverished of any level of understanding oh, of how I to see. deal on a social level. Oh, okay. Yes, well, absolutely. Okay. So I hear what you're saying about you know Pookie and Ray Ray, which yeah. I don't even want to go there because that's no, just well, so. Well, my why they got to be Jesus. Pookie? Well, they're my cousins. Right? I got a cousin named Pookie. And I got a cousin named Ray Ray. Mm, okay. Or should I say Beth and Jones? They could I mean, be Raymond and, and and Percy. Well, that's what right? he calls them. Be. His name is Percy. I think the first thing that you do is you stop calling them Pookie and Ray Ray. <laughs> Call them by their <laughs> God given names, and they can probably start Percy, responding different. Percy Judd or Percival. 
Oh God, Aloysius. No, please. So I please. think we can focus energy on changing the individual. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. And so I think that's kind of what you're speaking to, or I think we can focus on changing systems. I personally am not in, not interested in going and shaking my finger at Pookie. Right. Yeah. I want to change <laughs> the entire system that right. that puts Pookie in position where that's where he thinks is his best option. And if you look at the brain research mm-hmm. on scarcity and right. how scarcity affects your bandwidth to make good decisions, I think you might feel a little differently about the role that poverty plays in violence. Right. right. So basically she's saying my bandwidth is, is, is uh, it may narrow. Be. Yeah. A little tight. Your brain is like, <laughs> your brain is like AM radio. No, your brain is like ham radio. Oh, do they it's even like, use ham radio anymore? That's my point. <laughs> you're getting, like, get, you're getting, like hold on, no. Talkies. Getting back to the economic point yeah. of view that you were making about about the project that you're working on, how how do we tie that uh, the upward mobility of a people, and how do we convince systems like a government, a state, or a local government that it is in your best interest to expand the playing field with minor? We don't even use it. Black like folk. Use black it. Thank folk. You. Black right. folk. How do we, I mean? How do we convince a system that that reports that they've only done six percent of, of any types of contracting uh, with all public dollars with uh, with black folk? How do you convince a system like that to turn from their wicked ways to do something that's better? But it's a system full of black leaders, though. Well, yeah, and that's right. We've had black leaders in <laughs> so a lot of these major cities, especially in the South. <laughs> so I don't. I don't. I don't. I would not confuse uh, political office with power sure. and influence. I wouldn't sure. confuse political power with. I got um, you. I got you. That, that makes influence. sense. So that makes sense. those are not the people who are um, pulling the strings. I don't think, mm-hmm. uh, or kind of making. I won't say even making deals, but just making things happen that we don't. We're not privy to that aren't going to happen in a city right. council meeting. Right. Um, I think that. Uh, I think it's interesting when you think about municipal contracting, right? So um, Daryl Cobbins, um, Ron w- Red Wing, some other folk. I had a uh, press conference down at the Civil Rights Museum. Yeah, that after was I'd some written, time ago. That yeah, a couple years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, to talk about minority contracting specifically. It was in direct response to something I'd written at the paper about how shameful it was that, um, to use Henry Brooks' words, that black people were basically financing their own discrimination, right, right. when they were paying taxes to a county that then wasn't hiring black businesses. Sure. So Daryl and them had this nice press conference in their yeah. suits, polite, right? Yeah. Got nowhere. These folk went out there and shut down this bridge. Wow. Right, and then it comes up at uh, was it Pastor Atkins? Yeah, church? yeah, right, it's right. 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 Grady Money. That's right, Grady so Money Church. Yes, my mother always told me, uh, "A hard head makes a soft behind." Right, so you can either listen to me or you can feel me. Yeah, or so I'm not speak sure. Louder than words. Right, so I'm not sure what it will take. Um, but you know, well, there was a, a Martin and there was a Malcolm, right? Right, yeah. and they they needed each other, right? Of, and of so course. maybe we can encourage people to. Listen to the Rons and the Daryls um, before folk go out on the bridge. But channel some of the, I got you. You're listening to Funky Politics, powered by the Kazuki Network. We're visiting this evening with Wendy Thomas, independent journalist. But I, I got to go back to the to the, the point, though, that, you know, why is, excuse me, I know I'm going to be very politically incorrect. Be, please but why be. Are we, why are funky we, politics. Why are we still asking Massa for anything? Mm. Wow. I mean, it's it's like you're asking somebody <laughs> To give you what's already yours. To give you what's already yours. Already it's, the most, yours. it's the most mind-blowing thing. That's and nice. we're trying to encourage people to be, it's like we're legislating common sense and humanity here. Okay? Wow. If you've got a segment of your population that represents 70%, yeah. 7 out of 10 people, and you're not trying to provide economic empowerment to that 7 out of 10 people, then you're basically committing suicide to your community, including you. Yeah. You know, it's it's it blows my mind that we still have to do that, but it also blows my mind that seventy percent of the community is standing in line like the folks at IKEA or somewhere waiting to get in. <laughs> oh God, waiting to get. We want something. to talk about that. How can I get this contract? How can I get this? How can I? But where is the dealing with? Where is the dealing with each other going to come in? Where is that going to happen? You know, where are people going to start doing things the way that they've always historically done it? Before Martin Luther King talked about economic empowerment in a city like Memphis. You had the Martin brothers. You had, you know, um, Robert Church. You had yeah, yeah. Maceo Walk. You had a number of people. So, you know, that's 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 a that was always there. That was a natural reflex. So, why is it that we're not at that point to where we're dealing with each other? Is it a trust issue? Is it a capacity issue? Is it a common sense issue? 
Or is it or that lack we, of we don't think that we're powerful enough to be able to, right. to, to I think command that these might things? be getting close to it. You think uh, so? That we don't not think realizing our, our not power. realizing your own strength, right? Your own potential, right. yeah. Basically, right. your power. So if you don't do that, then basically what we're living is what we have now, which is a social apartheid right here in our own city. It's a waiting for massa kind of thing, as you you that's said. That's what it is politically. That's incorrect. what that's what it is. We are Pretoria. 2016. Well, part of that is, and, and one of the things that happened in the community here in, 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 in Memphis was that you had IKEA that came and they, sh- they they showed us all this nice, shiny new right. furniture that we're going to get. We can put the modular stuff together. And when it came to turning right. that dirt out there, right. there was not one major black and there minority was no, and, and there was no requirement and there was that no there requirement. be one. There was no concern. So how did that happen right. in a city that right. I, I'm, I'm, I, I I'm, think you know. because I think we we got to start understanding that it's bigger than just meeting a percentage goal. It's about developing a community and empowering everyone so that the community rises. That's really what it's about. Jokes aside, we could talk sure. it all day long. You know, I, I'm almost you know just spent with it all. Yeah, blowing the face. Uh, yeah, as we say. We've got to have. We've got to get to a point to where we just understand. And nobody got and mad as hell every, enough and talking about helping it. everyone and all the boats rising particularly African Americans with 70% of the population is the right thing to do. You are listening to Funky Politics powered by the Kazuki Network. We're visiting this evening with Wendy Thomas, independent journalist and worldwide world renowned, I would say. Funk nominal woman. Funk nominal woman. There you go. And she's a journalistic guru. Yeah. 